We're, so we're going to talk about pickles tonight. Of course, I am not the expert. The expert is one Dave Leader, who wrote the book on pickles. And uh, he uh, published this a few years ago. Dave is now retired down to Florida, but I believe he still has copies of the book available, or you can get it through certain hobby shops or other places. But he, he's, he's been a source for me and a lot of in information um, and did a great clinic on it. But I've just, you know, I just stole some stuff from him and went on. So cucumbers are the source of pickles. Uh, the typical, some of you were talking about making pickles, but the process normally is you soak the cucumbers in a vat of salt brine at, a, at what's called a salting station. And then uh, once they've sat in that brine for extended period of time, they are then loaded into vats or tubs on what we call a pickle car for transportation to the factory where the pickles are then soaked in vinegar to displace the salt, and then they're sliced, packed, whatever else is done with them at the, at the factory. The photo here is of a Keokuk Kenning pickle field down around in the southeast corner of Iowa. Keokuk Kenning, Kenning was based in Keokuk, Iowa. And uh, I found as I started researching this that pickles were raised all across eastern Iowa. Uh, we think more places like Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, maybe northern Indiana, northern Illinois. But in the early years, pickles or cucumbers were common in eastern Iowa. So, and of course, um, here's a photo of farmers bringing their cucumbers to the to a um, Heinz facility in Holland, Michigan, of all places. I have no idea how that got in here. So, we'll just have to live with that. <laughs> Here is a more of a typical salting station. This is in Walker, Iowa, northeast Iowa. And you, you can see the wood tubs or vats. They've got a platform built around them so, you, so the workers are up at the level of the top of the vats. You got a little bit of a shed here. You, so you can see some ladies there who are probably in the process of sorting cucumbers as they come in um, by size to put into the different size tubs. Here's a photo of Waverly, Iowa, of a salting station that later was owned by Marshall Kenning. You see the tubs are white. They are often whitewashed, which made them a little bit cleaner or easier to clean or something, but they stood out. And you notice they're all out in the open air. Um, sunlight helped a lot to dis dissipate any bacteria or other problems you might have with the cucumbers soaking in the salt brine. The other problem you had with open vats, of course, was things flying overhead and dropping stuff. And so there were a lot of pickle salting stations that were under roof, but then you didn't have the sunlight. So it was a, a topsy-turvy, you know, your choice, which you preferred to, to deal with the problem. Here we see them loading cucumbers into a vat. This is at a hind salting station. Um, as you can see, this is a large open vat. So here is one that's under a roof. Um, the, the roof uh, advantage was you didn't get rainfall diluting the uh, salt brine that the pickles are floating in. And you can see here the white scum that's floating around on top. And of course, all the baskets and stuff that came in. Um, here is how they got those cucumbers out of the vats. They just look, used a net, often a fishing net. Uh, this fellow is in, somewhere out in um, New York, uh, a forming company fishing out the pickles. Here's a shot of a pickle car being set aside at the salting station in Kiyosako, Iowa. Um, I lived in Kiyosako for a while, and so it was interesting to learn that there was a salting station there. And I even got to talk to a fellow who was a teenager, had the job of cleaning the vats out in the summertime. Once they got emptied of, of the um, salted down pickle cucumbers, they would drain the vat, and his job was going in there and scrub the vat down and get it all clean for the next batch coming in. His family also raised cucumbers for the salting plant. So, And here is what we typically think of as a pickle car. And you can see the workers up there with their wheelbarrows, and they have fished them out of the vats, filled the wheelbarrow, and they're now dumping the, those cucumbers into the vats on the um, pickle car. And these also, I think, are filled with a salt brine. Uh, notice over here, there's a plank going up to the top of the car. You can just see the edge of probably one of the vats. 
They just run the wheelbarrow up the plank and over and dump and then go back down. This happens to be up in South Dakota on the Northwestern. And this is a Squire dinghy um, pickle car. Here we are just collecting the cucumbers at a salting station. They've got some sort of a sorting mechanism here where they can pick through. Um, the pickle companies were looking for certain size of cucumbers and if farmers brought in the wrong size, they would be docked. Um, extra large cucumbers could be used for spears and slices. Real small ones were the ones that were sought after for making gherkins and things like that. So um, this is a um, Libby McNeil Libby pickle station in um, Indiana. You can see the bats up here and of course the barrels and collection stations and workers. And here's an, a, another, I just got a lot of photos of, it's amazing how many of these places were around the upper Midwest in the farming areas. Just the open vats, so you see a green elevator back there, probably railroad tracks run through there somewhere. Here's one that's covered. This is a bond pickle company up in Wisconsin. At, um, oh, you Wisconsinites can probably pronounce that. I don't know, but it's a, another Libby McNeil Libby. So here is another salting station for Libby McNeil Libby, but this one's all covered. And this is in Sydney, Michigan. Here's one in Lakota, Lakota pickles. I don't know where it's located at, but you can see just the open vats along the track here, the depot there in the distance. Um, I, I can tell you where it's at. Good. It's, La, it's Lakota, Michigan. Michigan, all right. That's this. You know, you, you find photos, not always do they identify what they're located at. So thank you, Ron. Here's another Heinz salting um, facility in Worcester, Michigan, not Massachusetts, Michigan. So Heinz was all over the place. So this is up in Minnesota, uh, people sitting on the barrels at their pickle factory. And here is where they are uh, collecting the cucumbers and getting ready to dump them up into vats. Hey, Doug? Yes. Can I get that photo you just showed? Well, let me go back here. This one? See the, see the top? You were saying many of those vats were open. I, I remember a lot of those vats had covers. And look at that cover. On, they could open them like halfway. And so sure. those that were out in the open in the sun, they if it rained or, or that, they could close them whenever they needed to. I thought that was their hot tub cover. OK. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. There, there's obviously some planks and covers up there for for that purpose. So, um, you know, that's you'll have to read Dave's book to learn all about it. So, moving on, here's one. Here's one in Indiana. About, a comment about closing the cover it was keeping the mice and rats out of it. Because I knew a guy who worked at the one up in in uh, Holland, and uh, that's what he said. He said after you've worked there. You'll never eat another pickle. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Ron, for that. <laughs> so here again, you can see see the, the vats and they're squeezed in between the green elevator and the stock pen. So they're very sanitary, of course. <laughs> I mean, what, what wouldn't attract rodents between the stockyard and the green elevator? <laughs> that was on the Monon. Is that on the Monon? Francisville's on the Monon. I was down there two weeks ago. Okay. If I could make a point, the cover was to keep the pickles in the brine because they were buoyant at first and it took a while for them to absorb enough brine to sink. So they would put the cover on and it was under pressure too because the, the pickles, they developed a lot of pressure when they were pickling. Okay. Thank I you. Say, I see Dave Leader has joined us. I did send him an email this morning inviting yeah. him to join us. So we, we'll let Dave chime in when he needs to. Um, so uh, I will move on here. Let's see what I got next. Got, uh, here's a, a typical pickle car. This is from uh, American Car and Foundries 
um, photo collection that's now down in St. Louis, the Hyman Pickle Company out of Louisville, Kentucky. So, and they they had several good photos of this car. So if you want to build a model, uh, here's here's what they looked like. They were basically wood bats on a um, flat car with a cover. So, this is the Bud Long Pickle Company. Bud Long was a a company out of the Chicago area, and they had a field along the Rock Island tracks in Kiyosakwa that they owned where they grew cucumbers. And so Kiyosakwa shipped cucumbers into Chicago. So probably in a car like this. This one's the Brown Miller Company car. And so you see the construction is all fairly similar. So another shot of the Brown Miller car. This one is um, Block and Gunderheimer, uh, Long Island. And uh, I just learned last week that Long Island was a large um, producer of cucumbers for pickles. Uh, the sandy soil out there was ideal for raising cucumbers. The sign on the car says Guggenheimer. Oh, I, I couldn't type correctly, could I? <laughs> Well, keep pointing out the mistakes I make. So thank you. <laughs> I, I mentioned the Kika Canning, Canning Company. There's a, their pickle car. And then this one that's all blurry is actually a Pennsylvania Railroad pickle car. So even though a lot of the cars were owned by the, the um, producers of canning factories, there were a few that were also owned by the railroads themselves. Yeah, put an out of focus picture on for the Pensy guy. It's the only one I could find. You find a better one, share it. <laughs> I certainly will. I had no idea. <laughs> Absolutely no idea that the Pensy ever had those. That is so cool. Well, same here. Uh, well, now, now you have a hunt. Go looking. So. Oh, I got it in the basement. I got an AHM car. I'm, that's it, man. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. So, this is one owned by the Sioux. Um, they serve Gibney Picknells in Minnesota, and so, and th this is uh, Vaughn Almond Pickle Company out of Louisville, Kentucky, several companies there in Louisville. Notice this is a, a, a steel flat car, not a wood flat car body. So, and in case you're wondering, Vaughn Almond Pickle Car was the basic source, because these are the instructions for the um, Oh, uh, let's see, who who was it that the pickle car kit years ago? Northeastern or somebody like that. So that's what these drawings are from. So, and then of course, um, pickle cars today are available. We're all, I think many of us are familiar with the Athern car picture at the bottom, but American Model Builders does a laser kit, a laser cut kit for building a pickle car on top of a flat car. And here you can see one that's not been painted yet and you see how it's constructed. That would make a very nice looking car. So, of course, Heinz, they they had what we typically call the coffin cars. You didn't see the vats because they were all enclosed in with these with these sides. But essentially this was the same thing. It had tanks inside and roof hatches above on top where they would dump, dump in the cucumbers. Um, and here's a model uh, that uh, Jorg Hensel built. So and uh, they had several different designs. Here's an O-scale model on the bottom. I'm not, I don't know who built it, but you can see it's got the uh, steel supports along the sidewalls of the, of the car. And here is a drawing um, from the collection of a Norm Wilder that uh, was, there was at one time a, a SIG group for the Heinz um, company, and they made this drawing available, I believe. Here's a photo of some of the cars at the Heinz plant in Pittsburgh, if I remember right. Uh, you can see see they, they didn't have round tubs, they had uh, rectangular tubs that sat down inside the cars. And of course, the vinegar was the other part of the pickle industry. So you had vinegar cars, there's a Heinz vinegar car. Um, and there's another Heinz pickling vinegar, as it was called. Standard Brands was another brand. Oh, what what happened here? Uh, 
um, standard brands vinegar. Your wife or your mother probably purchased standard brands vinegar at the grocery store. This car, I believe, is still is at a museum out in California. So here's an early vinegar car. This is the Baltimore, Maryland National Vinegar Works. And you can see it's just wooden vats on a flat car, very similar to the very early oil tank cars. So, of course, Heinz also had box uh, refrigerator cars. We can see here for shipping products. Um, and then here we have the loading dock where they're loading boxes of, of products in the refrigerator cars. They had trucks for delivering their food items. And you can see on the truck there a variety of the items they carried. Uh, my, my mouse is getting carried away here. Some chili sauce, big beans, sweet pickles, peanut butter. Now, don't recall ever seeing Heinz peanut butter in the grocery store, but I guess it was out there. So, Of course, here's one of their later trucks, a, a mid 50s Chevy and some of their wagons. These are, I, there's a website out there with a lot of the Heinz history stuff on it. So these photos came from there. And I, I just love to see a team of horses with a wagon. And that's, that's just, that's a three hitch there. Gendy's Pickles had their own delivery trucks. This is um, someone out in California is driving a, a truck with pickle barrels. He's got a truck followed by a trailer there. Owl Trucking Company. So uh, here's some more photos of a factory up in Wisconsin. And then um, this is Benson, Michigan, a Freestone Pickle Company, and their pickle car. So I think that's the wrong uh, name on that. That's at um, Bangor, Michigan. Freestone, I, I think. I think that's correct. Bangor, Michigan for Freestone. Okay, I'll correct my um, label there because I I was writing that based on what I could read off the photo. Yeah, and it, it looks like looks like it might be Bangor. Yeah. It is oh, Bangor. It is. Thank you, David. It's still there. The company is still there. Okay. If they don't ship by rail. Yeah, I'm not from Michigan, so I don't know the geography. So. You guys will have to correct me. And you're good at that, I know. So. <laughs> of course, down south, we also had pickle. Here's a pickle factory in Wiggins, Mississippi. Uh, again, we got the, the standard pickle car there, some box cars. So. And here's, this was the American Pickle Company down there. This is a close up shot of that facility. This is in Burlington, Iowa. This is Burlington Vinegar and Pickle Works. I'm not sure if they were growing the pickles all under glass there or, or what, but they've got quite a greenhouse going. So here's a large pickle plant in um, Mount Olive, North Carolina for Mount Olive brand pickles. And look at all the all the vats out there in the open. And, it, and as you see, they all have uh, covers on them. So. This is Atkins Pickle Plant in Arkansas, a series of photos from 1955. Um, here's an overhead shot showing the rail line coming in and the, and the pickle bats there. So here's some of their, their bats. Now this is the plant later in the 1990s, still in operation. Still got all those pickle bats back there, but it looks like maybe they've lost their rail connection. And they've expanded their storage and doing it all by truck now. Just some more pickle vats. If you want to do a, a little touch with weathering, that's a good shot to show you how it's done. Claus at the pickle factory in Thayer, Indiana. And this is out in Tacoma, Washington, Nally's Fine Foods. Here we see the fellow using a typical fishing net to fish the um, cucumbers out of the vats and into, into his um, box here that the forklift will pick up and haul into the factory. 
Here are the ladies sorting the cucumbers for pickles at the Marshall Vinegar Works in Marshalltown, Iowa. Um, and here we are sorting pickles at the Atkins Pickle Factory down in Arkansas. So, and then here's these guys sorting pickles, looking at, at the size and comparing them. So. This is somewhere out in Washington, a pickle works, all the barrels stacked up in 1959. Again, looking at the size of the cucumbers or pickles. This is Pacific Vinegar Pickle Works in Hayward, California. Um, got the rail line here in the loading dock with the barrel stacked up. Uh, some uh, openings on the side of the building and here are the vats um, and the barrels. And here we are looking inside. This, this is all the same facility. It's, it's amazing what you can find once you start looking online for stuff. This is an unknown location in winter, so it's certainly not Mississippi or California. So. <laughs> this is a facility out in Utah, Utah Pickle Company. So. And Rockford, uh, Illinois, their pickle works. Of course, here we are back to Heinz at, at Pittsburgh. They had a large, large facility there. And uh, I, I do know that the um, first Heinz facility built outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania was built in Muscatine, Iowa in the um, 1890s. Having lived in Muscatine for a while, they were quite proud of that fact. So, and here we are, Holland, Michigan, Heinz facility there. Here's another Heinz factory. Notice the sign here, the, the Ray sign. Um, I understand that Heinz salesmen were um, given little um, pins like a tie tack in the shape of the pickle with the Heinz name, name on it that, that they um, wore or carried around and sometimes they gave them out to people. I know I've seen them, I think Dave, are they in your book? No, they're, they're not, but I've seen them. They, they started giving them out at the World's Fair in 1893 in Chicago. That's okay. where they started. Maynard Mitchell today had a picture of the one he has in his possession. Yes. So that's what made me think when I saw this photo. I'm oh, yeah, the, the little Titac pins. So, yeah. And here's somebody just sitting there resting after his hard work at the pickle uh, salting station. So, of course, sauerkraut was another thing to, you know, you get the pickles and the vinegar and then you get in other things that are pickled sauerkraut being one of them. So here's the stern sauerkraut bath that I came across. Um, and then Midland Vinegar and St. Paul, these are all related. If you read Dave's book, you'll learn about all the connections. So, and of course, here's a this is another Heinz facility in um, Holly, Michigan, I think in 1957. Just look at all the different roof lines and structures, the big brick chimneys. So uh, just looks like the perfect thing that Maynard should build, right? More pickle vats, more pickle vats. Vinegar vats, North Rose, New York. Um, I can remember when we used to go down to Arkansas to visit the in-laws. Um, there was a vinegar, vinegar works there in Rogers, Arkansas. One time a rail fan friend of mine asked my wife if she would take some pictures the next time she went to see her dad. And then it was a few years later we were done there. It was all torn down and gone. So they were making vinegar out of apples down there. This is in um, St. John, New Brunswick, Canada, the McCready Limited. There are pickle vats sitting out along the street. And here is um, a, uh, another shot of their, their building. Creating suns there. And of course, Iowa is not left out. Here's Best Pickles, Ed Ziegler's in Ankeny, Iowa. So just up the road from me. Of course, Marshall Vinegar Company out um, in Marshalltown, Iowa. Uh, men Vinegar and pickles were all part of the Marshall, uh, the um, Western Grocer concern. Uh, you've probably heard me talk about Western Grocer in the past. So, 
And this is their I facility. The, uh, on the uh, slide of Ziegler or Zingler or Zinger, the name on the caption Zinger doesn't match Ed Zingler with an L. Yeah, again, my finger doesn't type well. Zingler, you got to put an L in that caption there. <laughs> I, yes, I'll do that. Okay. We're... If you guys would all just snail mail me the <laughs> corrections. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to walk, walk them to you, huh? There you go. Yeah. Come <clears throat> visit. I'll put you to work on the railroad. <laughs> so, this is this is the Marshall um, the Marshall Canning facility in Marshalltown, Iowa. And these are the vats. This is a photo by Jim Sands. The lighter brick building back here is the Marshall Vinegar, uh, Marshall Canning Vinegar Factory. You can just see in the distance here the Chicago Northwestern Yard in Marshalltown. This is with the Schlitz sign on it. That's the old Northwestern Freight House in Marshalltown. For those of you who know Marshalltown, give you an idea of where we're located. We're on the north side of the yard, and there's the Third Street overpass. So. Here's another photo from Jim Sands of that same facility. Um, uh, kind of a roofed over collecting area and then the, the vats out in the open. So, of course, there are some models available. This is one that um, the N-Scale architect puts together. You can, if you're into N-Scale, and then if you're into HO, American Model Builders has got this, um, the GR Dillon Sons uh, solving station. And of course, uh, not that I'm trying to promote purchasing books, but there is an excellent book out there on the subject. <laughs> so. <laughs> and, and that is just a quick look at pickles. Can I make one comment? Of course. Um, one thing that's very important that David found when he put out his book, it, for many years, when I used to look at the pickle, uh, industry for what it's worth. I did all of that. And there was everything you found in research on Heinz company said all they ever had was coffin cars. And for the when David first put out his book, lo and behold, he's got a photo of Heinz company with the regular VAT type cars that almost all other companies had. So he uh, blew away the myth that used to be in a lot of the research that Heinz only had coffin cars. <laughs> David can probably comment more on it. I have a question. I can sure. see I can see how all the pickles get into those pickled cars through the roof hatches. How do they come out of those pickle bins? <laughs> how do they get them out? I would assume the same way they got in there with a, a fishing net and a guy on the end of the handle. Boy, that's a lot of fishing. Nets. Well, the, the Heinz cars look like they could just lift those uh, those tanks out of the car and dump them into the into the factory. Yeah, those square uh, tanks make sense. But I was thinking they, I, somebody they did, with they a... Maybe they use suction. Yeah, because I can't see them fishing all those pickles out with a net. They use... They used dip nets. They used what? It was all by hand. Labor was cheap. Yep. Labor was cheap. It was all by hand. Yeah, but you got to. And get... those vats never came out of the Heinz cars. No. Nope. I thought they did oh. too. Nope. I was corrected. The vats stayed in the cars. They didn't empty them and dump them. Correct. Well, there was one photo there of a coffin car with the tanks crossways. Uh, you know, sitting on top of the car, so the tanks they were they up. were rebuilt. They were rebuilding it. Correct. Yep. Yep. I have a question. When you look at most of, the, well, I think all of the photos that Doug shared with us tonight, there seems to only be one pickle car, like in a train or being loaded. And yet the quantity of the vats around the processing were enormous. So where did all the other pickles go? Rats. Because it, it looks to me like it would take several cars to empty one tub. It did. 
but it took a long time to fish all those pickles out of each tank. So you could probably load up uh, three or four cars, pull them out of there and spot three or four more. The guy would still be up there with his net <laughs> trying to get pickles out. Those, just, of us, I... those of us that live in Michigan don't have to go very far to find a lot of pickle stuff. You, over in Decatur, there is a, a group of new pickle vats, they're all made out of plastic, hundreds of them. And of course, Bangor is right up the road. Holland is not very far away, although you won't see much in Holland anymore. Almost the only thing that they get in there is alcohol to make their vinegar out of it. Well, there used to be one right across the river from us in sodas, flams. Hmm. Yeah, I, I was just surprised when I, when I started looking at this, how, how many of the salting stations were around eastern Iowa, clear up all the way as far west as Marshalltown along the M and St. L area and the Marshall Canning and Western Grocer had, you know, a, as big of a interest in pickles and then how many cucumbers were raised to feed that industry. So you know, I, I think of Iowa corn and beans. I just, you know, all the other stuff, I just don't think about. So. I wonder if that photo that showed a greenhouse was a pickle factory that grew its own dill. They probably started, they probably were growing a, some cucumbers in there. I don't think they were growing their own dill. As a as a greenhouse man, remember I've got a degree in horticulture. <laughs> yes. So they were doing starter sets for the local farmers to for cucumbers. Yeah, so. Well, that's all I have to share. So. Well, thank you very much, Doug. That was outstanding, as always. I'd like to put in my two cents worth about the book. Uh, I saw a reference to it and uh, ordered it. It's very fascinating. Okay, I think, I think we had David and Brian both trying to say something, and I didn't catch either one. Yeah, same here. I said great presentation. Oh, very good. Yeah, and thanks for getting on, David. That was great to have you here. All right. David, good to see you after all the long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Outstanding. Hopefully, uh, we'll pick we'll we'll get some renewed sales of your book based on our 21 attendees here. <laughs> all right except you guys won't get them signed <laughs> well we might <laughs> Ooh. yeah all right uh next week seth lakin is going to be on and you remember seth he presented back uh, i don't remember how long ago it was yeah. seemed like it was maybe uh, uh, toward the end of last year but anyway seth is going to present on lakeshore and michigan southern brick depots so he's got a clinic prepared for that. And uh, so that, that'll be next week. And um, as always, if anybody's interested in presenting, just get a hold of me or Ron and let us know, and we'll put you on the schedule. Um, so thanks for everybody for coming out. Doug, thanks again for stepping up with a great uh, presentation on a topic that had come up on the email list this, uh, I guess it was last week. Maybe it was this week. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, lots of fun. And thanks, everybody, for attending. We'll see you next week. Hey, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> now, I thank David for inspiring me. <laughs> Absolutely. Yay, yeah. David. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Good night. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Good night. What a pickle.